Father, we are so much grateful for this blessed and glorious blessing that you've given unto us. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the gift of salvation. And we thank you for the gift of your word. Your word is our wisdom. Your word is our strength. Your word is our guide. You never left us without a guide. You never left us without Father giving us what to live with. Every moment, Father, we come before you is that we want to know thee. As we come before you, we say, Father, we are not wise in our own ways. But in all things, Father, we want to acknowledge your God and that you know all things. May you come and speak to us. May you come and guide us. May you come and strengthen us. May you come and give us the grace to receive your wisdom. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray and believe. Amen. God is good. Amen. And all the time. Amen. Hallelujah. The message that the Lord has given us this afternoon. He wants us to realize that we've been chosen for a special purpose. When we began this afternoon, we read Psalm 91, where it tells us, They that dwell in the secret place of the Most High. They shall dwell under the shadow of the Most High. Meaning there is a secret place that God has prepared. A place where he can be able to protect. Where he can be able to bless. And we can be able to receive every blessing that he has ordained for us. And in this secret place that God has ordained. He says if you dwell in that place. God has chosen you. And has placed us in that place. Where we can be able to live according to his will and purpose. Our God we serve is not God of coincidence. He doesn't do things by random. Everything that God does, he plans it. He told Jeremiah, even before you were formed in the womb, I knew you. I sanctify you. I chose you. And I set you apart. So before even we were born, even when our parents, they are not planned for us, God knew us by name. And God chose us. So we are not here by accident. We are here for the purpose of God. Because we were in the mind of God even even before we were born. Yeah. And he brought us into this earth. So we are special children before the Lord. And that's why the Apostle Peter tells us in the book of Second Peter chapter 1 and verse number 10 he says like this Second Peter 1.10 Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to, pre to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never stumble. Hallelujah. He says, because God has called you, because God has chosen you, be diligent to show how to present yourself to make that your calling is sure. Hallelujah. Because it is God who has called us. It is not you who chose God. This is what Jesus said in the book of John 15, verse number 16. He said, you did not choose me. Hallelujah. Amen. You didn't choose to come here this afternoon. God had already chosen you. Amen. And he called you. Amen. And he appointed you. Amen. So everything we do because God has already chosen you. Amen. 
That's how special we are. Hallelujah. And the way God chose us, He chose us because He loves us. Glory to God. Amen. God has chosen you because you are special in the eyes of the Lord and God loves you. Amen. He's not chosen you based on anything else but based on his love. Hallelujah. Amen. I want us to go to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse number 26. He says, For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of this world to put to shame the wise things. God has chosen the weak things of this world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And the best things of this world, the things which are despised, God has chosen. And these things which are not to bring to nothing the things which are. So that no flesh should glory in his presence but of him you are, uh, but, of, but of him you are in Christ Jesus who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption that as it is written he who glories let him glory in the Lord hallelujah just what we have read this moment says that when God was looking unto you when God was looking unto me he chose us not because you are strong not because you are wise not because you are highly not because you are popular not because you come from that tribe he chose you according to his own will and purpose that no one can come before the Lord and glory or brag before God. No one can boast before God. He chose us. Though you may be weak. Though you may be having some weaknesses. Though there's some things you're still struggling with. God still chose you. He chose you so that he can be able to use you. Hallelujah. Because God is the potter. He can make anything from the clay. We are the clay. Hallelujah. He can mold it the way he wants. He can take your weakness and mix them to be your strength. He can take your failures and make them to turn them to be success. He can do all things. That's why he's taken you the way you are. Everyone that God called, when you read in the Bible, nobody was called and said, I knew, I was waiting. <laughs> Now everyone that was called they say why me I'm not I'm not up to the calling Moses himself when he was called when he was when God appeared to him on Mount Horeb and God was sending Moses and telling him I'm sending you back to Pharaoh and Moses asked why me I cannot even be able to speak. And God said, I will be with you. At least you go there and speak and say, I went because I could speak well. But now you know that you can't speak. When you go there and speak, then you know it is me speaking. And not you speaking. Hallelujah. When Gideon was called, it was a time when there was so much trouble in Israel. They were under the oppression. And he was about even to hide his food. And God came and said, oh you strong man. He didn't feel or look like strong. 
And he thought the angel was not speaking to him. He said, my family is the strongest, the smallest. And not only that, my tribe is the smallest. So why me? And God said, I will be with you. I'll be with you. That's why God chose the weak. The Bible says that God loves the poor. Blessed are those who are poor in spirit. The word poor. We are used to poor, seeing poor people around. And one thing about the poor person, he's never independent. A poor person is always dependent. And when God says, Blessed are the poor, he said, Happy are those who depend on God. Those who know, unless God be for me, unless God listen to my prayers, I can do nothing. That's why God chooses the weak. Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy 7. Deuteronomy 7. And I want us to read from verse number 6. God is speaking and reminding the children of Israel why he chose them. He says, for you are a holy people to the Lord your God. And the Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for himself. A special treasure above all the peoples on the face of the earth. Amen? Amen. Verse number 7, very important. The Lord did not set his love on you or choose you because you are more in number than other people. For you are the least of all the peoples. Amen. Amen. But the Lord, but because the Lord loves you and because he will keep the oath which is what to your father, the Lord has brought you out, of, out, out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of bondage, from the hand of the Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Hallelujah. He said, I didn't choose you because you are strong, because you are many. No, I chose you because I love you. I've chosen you because I've loved you. You are afraid this moment is a gift that God has given unto you. And God has given unto you because he loves you. Amen. We know our God is love. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God is love is not the description of God but love is the essence of God he is who he is Amen. hallelujah Amen. and love is not just mere sentimental or romantic words or something like that love is more than that but many people still they don't feel the love of God why many people are not be able to feel the love of God because sin has spoiled our capacity to be able to receive that love and to know we've been chosen by God when we know that God loves us and that he's chosen us and that his love for us is unconditional his choice to you is unconditional then we can be able to love him we can be able to obey him we can be able to follow his commandments because we know his love is real his love is absolute hallelujah so when we know that he loves us as he told the children of Israel then it is for us to realize we are the beloved of the Lord so that when the enemy tells you God doesn't love you God doesn't care nothing can move you 
Because you know God loves you. Hallelujah. No matter what you go through. No matter the trouble. Still you know that God loves you. So God loves us and that's why he's chosen every one of us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And because God loves us so much. He saw our wretchedness. He saw where we were. He came down and took us out. I want us to look in the book of Zechariah chapter 3. Zechariah. This is a vision that the Lord showed about Joshua, his servant. Das ist, uh, the vision that God showed about Joshua, the high priest. The Bible makes him understand that we are a royal priesthood. Hallelujah. We are a chosen generation. We are people that God has set us apart. And this is how God has chosen us. And this is what God did for us. Hallelujah. Because we know that we were in some place. But he came down and plucked us out. Verse number one says, Then he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before an angel of the Lord. And Satan standing at his right hand to oppose him. And the Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. This is, is this not a brand plucked from the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garment and was standing before the angel. Then he answered and spoke to those who stood before saying, Take away the filthy garment from him. And to him he said, See, I have removed your iniquity from you and I'll clothe you with rich robes. And he said, Let them put a clean turban on his head. So that they put a clean turban on his head and they put the clothes on him and the angel of the Lord stood, stood by him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In this vision, this, uh, this, I believe this is all our lives. Is, glaube, before we were separated to Christ. Before we, uh, you, are, you are like a brand in the fire. A piece of, of charcoal that is in the fire. That is about to burn. And God came and took that brand out of the fire. And God came and took our life out of the fire. Hallelujah. And saved us. And he said Joshua was clothed in filthy garment. But when God chose him. He took away his filthy garment. And he clothed him with the garment of Christ. And that's what happens to us. Hallelujah. Whatever we did, the mistake we did. When God blacks it out of the fire. He cleanses us. Then he clothes us with Christ. That's why the Bible says, Jesus is our righteousness. Hallelujah. We are the righteousness of, of Jesus. Hallelujah. So we are clothed in that garment of righteousness. Because God has taken us out. And God has cleansed us and purified us. What God is telling us this afternoon He's making us realize that we are chosen The one who chose you He chose us because he loves us When David committed sin of adultery And even killed somebody in the process of covering his sin 
Though God had chosen him, God sent his prophet. And when the prophet came and spoke to David, when he made him know how much God loved him, David wrote Psalm 51 and says, Oh God, create another heart in my create a, create, create a clean heart in my heart, oh Lord. Renew me, hallelujah. Restore me. I don't want to be rejected. I want to be in your presence. He saw what happened to Saul when he was rejected. How his life was miserable. And he says, God, create in me a clean heart and renew the right spirit within me. Amen. That I may be able to appreciate and to know that you've chosen me and you've loved me. And God, don't cast me away. I want to remain in that secret place. I want to abide in that secret place. I want to remain in your presence. And God was moved with that prayer. Hallelujah. Because he saw the brokenness of David. God wants us to remain his chosen ones. But he's telling us we must make our election and our calling to be sure. We must remain in that place. First Corinthians chapter 10. He says, Moreover, brethren, I do not want you to, to be unaware that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and all were baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea meaning they were set apart they were chosen they were delivered from Egypt all ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ but but meaning they were chosen they were ordained for the promised land. They were ordained for the promises of God. But something happened. But with most of them, God was not well pleased. For their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. They were not ordained to die in the wilderness. They were not chosen to die in the wilderness. They were chosen to see the promised land. We've been chosen to see the goodness of the Lord. We've been set apart to spend eternity with our God. We've been chosen even in this world to enjoy the blessing of God. But it says with many, God was not pleased with them. And they end up dying where they were not supposed to die. They ended up not reaching the promised land. Though they were chosen, let it not be our portion. Yes, we've been chosen. And let's continue living according to the purpose of God. Verse number six. Now these things became our examples to the intent that we should not last after evil things as they also lasted. And do not become idolaters as some of them, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. No, let us commit sexual morality as some of them did, and in one day 23,000 fell. No, let us tempt Jesus Christ, nor let, no, 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 let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed by the serpents. Nor complain as some of them also complained and were destroyed by the destroyer. 
Now all these things happen to them as an example that they were written for our domination or our learning upon whom the ends of the ages have come. Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. Amen? Amen. We've been chosen. We've been set apart. But he said, let him who thinks he stands take heed be careful lest you fall amen we are in the world but not of the world and he says in this world there is going to be all kind of things coming against us we are just like in a slippery world a place that is slippery you don't just walk carelessly no matter how old you are <laughs> even if you are born here raised here <laughs> and it is winter and there is snow outside there you can't just walk the way you want to walk you still have to walk carefully because you know you can fall the, sne- the snow doesn't know your age you still bring you down the same case is to have been told we in the world the devil has no respect of no one so take heed because the aim of the enemy is to disqualify you that's why Paul say every day I discipline myself least when I have taught everyone else when I've taught everyone else, I be disqualified. Let's take heed. Hallelujah. We are being told we should be sober and we should be vigilant. Amen. Because we are surrounded by the enemy. It's not that the enemy is stronger than us. We are stronger than the enemy. But you don't leave us if you don't exist. He is there to make your journey difficult. That's why we are told in Ephesians chapter 6 from verse number 10. Be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. And he said, put on the armor of God. Glory to God. Put on the armor of God. Because you are ready to fight. You are ready to be attacked. But when you are with your armor, you are ready to live and you are ready to die. Glory to God. As I close, I want us to look in the book of Jeremiah chapter 9 and verse number 23 9 Jeremiah 9 verse 23 Thus says the Lord Thus says the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man glory in his might. Nor let the rich man glory in his riches. The things which people are glorying in. The things which people boast because they have. God he says it's nothing. Don't glory because of these things. Verse 24, but let him who glory, glory in this, that he understands and knows me. Glory to God. Let him glory. Glory is in glory in this that he understands and knows me. That I'm the Lord exercising loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. 
For in this I delight, says the Lord. He says, whatever we should be happy, having in this world is not that you have all the riches or you are all wise or you have whatever you have in terms of the material things he says no I want you to rejoice because you understand me you understand the ways of God you discern the ways of God you know what is God is saying and you know him knowing him it's not just you know this God you know his name is Jehovah oh you know him is El Shaddai you can call all the name but you don't know him Knowing him is relationship. His relationship. Not everybody you see, you know. Most of the time we use this word, I know that person. But you don't know the person. I see the person, but I don't know him. Because knowing is knowing. Hallelujah. So when God says, you know me, I know you. That's why Jesus said, in the last day, many will come and say, Lord, Lord, Lord. They'll use great names, Lord. But I say, I never knew you. I never had a relationship. So I don't know you. He says, let us know him. Have a relationship with God. Hallelujah. Every day build your relationship with God. Through reading the word of God. Seeking to understand him. Hallelujah. Communing with God every day. Because he's chosen you. And he says, the one, I know the plan I have for you. So how can you know the plan of God if you're not in relationship with Him? You'll be doing your own things you think is the plan of God. He, into, he is going to bless His plan, not your plan. Because your plan is to give yourself glory. But the plan of God is He gets the glory, you get the blessing. So when we talk to God, when we know God, when we read the word of God before you make any decision go before him and then say I know you that's what the Bible says trust in the Lord with all your heart with all your heart and say don't lean on your own understanding because your understanding is small is limited but his understanding is forever and he says in all things in everything acknowledge acknowledge him and he's going to direct your path as the chosen children of God let every move you make be direction of the Lord the Bible talking about prophet Samuel he says none of his word fell down because he never spoke unless the Lord has spoken every battle that David fought there's no one single battle David was defeated because David even if he was going to meet the same enemy he came before the Lord and said the enemy has come again and God told him this way we are going to defeat him so let's be those God that are chosen those who depend on God that we may fulfill the purpose of God in our lives in our families we are vessels of his glory he want to be glorified through you allow him to be glorified through you know him 
Understand him and follow his ways. And he'll bring you to the place that he has ordained. And after this life, he'll receive you in glory. Hallelujah. You have nothing to lose. Because no matter what comes against you, when you know if God be for me, it doesn't matter what is against me. He said, What can separate us from the love of Christ? Nothing. Hallelujah. Let's just stand on our feet this afternoon. Father, I want to thank you for this word that you've spoken unto us. You made us realize, Father, that it is not us who have chosen you. But Father, you chose us even before the foundation of this world. You chose every one of us. You know every one of us by name. Your word makes us understand that, Father God, you've inscribed us on the palm of your hand. That we may be continually, always be before your, your presence. Father, we delight to be in your presence. We want to dwell in that secret place. The place of safety. The place of joy. The place of strength. The place of hope. Or the place of peace. The place where the enemy cannot be able to defeat any one of us. Father, that's why we want to dwell. We thank you for the invitation. We thank you for choosing. We thank you for anointing. We thank you for separating us. We thank you for sanctifying us and our families. Father, we declare we want to know you. We want to know you every day. That my Father, we may find grace before your presence. Show us the way. Lead everyone in the way that you ordain. Fight the battle of every one of us. Make way for every one of us. And bring us to the place that you ordain. We surrender ourselves tonight. We give our servant to you, Jehovah God. We say only you are God. Only you are king. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God who never changes. The father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus, be the master. Be the center. Be the reason why we live. Be the fire. Be the wind in our life. We give you glory and we give you praise. As we receive your word, show us and continue teaching us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We pray and believe. Maybe in this place, you've never given your life to Jesus. You live a life as if you've not been chosen. But I want to you this day to surrender your life to Jesus. Let him put your name on his book of life. Let him be over your home. Let him be over your affairs. Let him be the master. He'll guide you. He'll direct you. This is the day for you to have a personal relationship with God. He says... Glory because you know me. Knowing God is not having a relationship with a religion. He's not having a relationship with a church. It is good to have all those relationships. But what is important is having that personal relationship with God. As your father, your creator, your savior. I want to give you this moment. Let him be your Lord. Let him be your master. Want to know him and he'll be in your life. If you've never given your life, come forward and you're going to pray for together. Hallelujah.